Just so everyone knows, the only people who can speak are me and Jampy. Because uh, this is a coaching session specifically for her. If you have questions, you can ask them in voice chat, text channel, and I'll try to answer them at the end of the thing. What part are we doing? Um, these two front skirt panels. Those are my red piano miniatures. For silver, it should be black, Kinsey. Whatever is fine, but black is best. Clean stuff up and you know, remember where you put anything. Yep. Just repeating again, everyone in the channel is muted except me and Jappy because this is specifically a coaching session for Jappy. You guys can ask questions in the voice chat text channel and I'll answer them either during or after. Did you learn from last time to mute everybody? 
sorry. Yes. <laughs> Is my uh, is my stream quality pixelated? A little bit, yeah. For me. Okay. Restarting or switching the server. Should be better now. It is much. I know, it's too bad. I'm gonna play myself. Red, I have no idea how to mount this thing. Put it in the base and then just use your double sided tape. That's too. It makes too much sense. It's, it's falling off, JP. It's not gonna survive if it falls. <laughs> you know what? This is what I don't want. Dude, uh, You wake me up from a nap. Ask me to do this. <laughs> Sound better. It's pro I probably need to glue it in. Yeah, I glue it at least one foot so you can still remove it if you want to. I'm gonna move something. Too much. It's too much. And people are gonna start leaving like crazy because they're gonna be like, I didn't come here to watch this clown. <laughs> I came here for my piano. Mm hmm. I'm bored and savior. Of course. All set in like ten minutes. So. Use your zip kicker then. Yeah, does that the zip kicker? Serious it's, question. Is it not fuck it up? It can fuck up the paint, yes, but just spray it on the foot. Let's spray. Don't spray Something. it on your painting area. Stay and get the zip kicker. Are we ready? I'm in. You go ahead and start talking, dog. Okay. So I'm gonna show two different methods. Normal, like, you can call it smooth TMM, like this. Smooth. And textured TMM, like this. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to be using. Vallejo Metal Color, that's not the color. Vallejo Metal Color Chrome. Yes, it's okay to join, Kibo. Black ink, any black ink is fine. Sepia ink, any sepia ink is fine. And, uh, blue ink, again. Any, any darker blue ink is fine. Is this, is this blue fine? Uh, this is... Process cyan. It's very bright. Uh, we're gonna mix it with sepia, so it'll probably be fine. There it is. Go. I'm gonna have to mix. Okay, so the first thing I'll just go over, like the basics of what TMM is and how you need to think about things. Uh, it's essentially the same as non-metallic metal, except we're using true metallics. So, when you're highlighting an object, you're doing the same thing as with 
Nomatop metal insofar as you're going to be placing your highlight in a specific spot and you're going to be placing your shadows uh, where shadows should be on the metal object. Um, the difference is since we're using metallics it's more about controlling where the light reflects rather than um, specifically placing like your white in a specific area and your black in a specific area. It's more about placing the silver and then controlling where the highlights are. So on this object, uh, on this model just in general, uh, or any model, you have to think about the shape of the object, what you're painting, and where the highlights and stuff should be. Of course that depends on a lot of factors, but generally a simple way to look at it is like just a frontal view, like so. Um, and you can actually see, because this is primed fairly glossy, you can actually get an idea of where the highlight should be based on where the light is actually reflecting on the model. Um, we can also think about these, all the parts of this model in simplistic terms by thinking of them as basic shapes. So these knee pads are basic shapes insofar as they are essentially cylinders. So a cylinder, if uh, if you think about this Vallejo bottle, for example, a cylinder has a highlight straight up and down in the center of wherever the light is reflecting onto the bottle into your eyes. So depending on where you're viewing from, it'll be uh, somewhere on the bottle, but it'll always be running up and down the center because it's a cylinder. So it's the same with these, these uh, five pads. They're basically cylinder shapes, so the highlight is going to be running somewhere down the center of the object. The uh, the chest piece is more of a it's kind of a, a cube combined with the cylinder, because you have this center line. You will get harsh highlights that go against the silver line or the center line rather, and then on the opposite side it'll be very dark because that line obscures the light and causes the light to reflect only along the edge. So you have to think about that things like that when you're when you're painting true metallics the same as when you're painting non-metallics. Okay. Um, we're just gonna do both of these die pads so we'll start out with the what I think is more boring and just do... are you ready Jay? Yeah. 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 Huh? I'm getting the paint off. Okay. So, when I'm doing true metallic metal and I'm trying to make it look relatively clean, I generally will base coat the part rather than um, doing what I'm going to do when I show you the textured. Um, with silver metallics, always start with black. Glossier is better. The reason for this is that when you're using metallic flakes, if you apply it on a matte surface, the matte surface will actually show through the metals and it'll make your metals look more grainy and less shiny. Um, especially with something like Vallejo Metal Chrome. If you apply this over a very glossy smooth surface you can actually get very close to a mirror kind of chrome finish. Not, not exactly with uh, acrylics but with other paints like Molotow. It requires a very smooth glossy glass finish underneath in order to get that finish. Um, I, uh, I think I remember if this is the one I accidentally primed with Vallejo instead of uh, Stonal Res, but it's pretty matte. That's fine. I'm just uh, saying for future reference. So right. All I'm going to do is base coat this half of the thigh pads here. I think it's a skirt. Yeah. Uh, whatever. I know, it's your manager. You yeah. made it. It's whatever you want. Exactly. It's a, it's a do thigh You generally pad. try to be pretty clean when you do this, because I, I ain't. Uh, no, I'm already done. Just slather it on and let it dry, and then do another coat. Oh, I can see the 3D print lines here. Yeah, it needs to be sanded. Do I have to do that? Later? 
if you want it to be smoother. Yeah. Uh, you can also just apply uh, more layers of paint and it'll eventually cover it up. This stuff dries pretty fast. Is this dry already? Well, I don't know. We're just going. Okay. I blew on it. Sometimes <laughs> make it dry. I'll so make it drier. That's fine. Dude, that made my my rinse cup beautiful. Of course. This is the base coat we're looking for. Yep. Very bright. See, yours is yours is much newer than mine, so yours is more shiny. Mm, does it really get old like that, though? It does, yeah. Yeah, no. For whatever reason, the metal color line, over time, it eventually gets kind of dingy. Would it do that on your model? Huh? Would, would it do that after you apply it on the model? No, it's just, no, it's just the bottom. It goes bad over time, I guess. But it's, uh, it's whatever. This bottle's almost empty as well. Supply. Is, can you still see the black through the silver? Is no. this body? Okay. No. Okay. So, get your black ink and blue ink and sepia ink. While she's doing that, I'll repeat again. You guys can ask questions in the voice chat text channel and I'll answer them either during or after I'm done. Okay, this is much more cyan than I thought it was. Yeah. That's fine. Get some glaze medium out while you're at it. Ooh, I gotta find where I put that. Anybody have any questions? No questions. Okay. Uh, we have satin glazing liquid. Is that, that's the same thing, right? Yes. Okay. Got it, dude. We're ready. Okay. Put your inks out. I shook them up. Uh, we're the using cups? we're using black ink to yeah put them in the cups. Just a little drop. You don't need a lot. One drop. One drop. Oh uh, yeah. There's always more. Yeah, that's fine. I have to give them back. I gotta make sure there's no chunks in this river. I'm using Vallejo Game inks, she's using FW inks. Kami no Wami. Yeah! Gloss black primer is fine. You can also just apply a coat of black paint and then gloss over it with gloss varnish. Okay, you ready? Mm hmm. Okay. So, um, for any metallic, you can do a lot of different things with it uh, in terms of color. Um, you can use, I tend to use sepia and black mostly because I think it just. I just like the look of it, but you can add other colors in there like yellows and blues and uh, you know 
greens and things like that if you want to make it look more interesting. It doesn't necessarily make sense realistically, but it looks better. So that's up to you. Um, first, uh, take a little blue ink and a little sepia ink and mix those. Since yours is brighter, use just a little bit with your sepia. Okay. We're going to use a lot of Mr. Hobby drops here. Yep. That should have just got a... And mix some glaze medium, just a little drop of glaze medium. The reason we're adding glaze medium is mostly because it has retarding properties. And it's going to make the paint slow, slow, drier, dry slower, rather. What color am I going for here? Just like a dingy blue, blue-brown. This is what we want. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I guess it's gonna dry out pretty fast. Why aren't you using a wet palette? I don't know, because I'm not. Because you didn't <laughs> tell me to. <laughs> you said nothing about that. We're, we're painting with acrylic, so I assume you just do it. But oh matter. my god, dude. Okay. I can change. I think I have one. It's well, already set up. Come on, just, we'll just, just go. Do this. Okay. So clean brush. Take your blue and sepia mix, basically just on the tip of the brush. Okay, I'm already doing it wrong. Yes. Okay. And then, what we're going to do is again thinking about it like a cylinder. I'm gonna turn it upside down. And I'm going to run the ink along this entire side of the skirt. Just like this. Oh, see, I didn't paint that. You didn't know. paint the inside panel there? No, I just, I wasn't paying That's attention, fine. I guess. <laughs> and once you apply it, you need to clean your brush real quick in your cup. And then go back and feather it, feather the edge of where it is. Apply. It. Well, you, you can wash first and then and then do it if you want. Just feathering for the kids at home, dude. Feathering is when you you feather the edge of the paint by making uh, strokes back and forth um, with a clean brush. Clean, damp brush. I think I do it different than you, though. Yeah, do it, do it side, going in in the direction of the color. Uh, like blazing. No, look, watch, watch what I'm doing. Okay, watch it. Like this, I'm going to apply it all the way down the length. Like this. Clean my brush. And then, going in the same direction I applied, I'm just pushing the paint away from the highlight. Alright, so I'm just going like this. Which paint do you load on your brush when you do this? Um, it's hard to say exactly, I just, if you can look at the video, just the entire tip is loaded. Basically just enough to, to get down the entire length of the part. Now what causes, like, a tide mark when you do this? Tide marks are caused by it drying too quickly. And you're not feathering it quick, quick enough. Okay. I have my camera out in like super small mode. Super small mode? Hard. Yeah, I can't really see it's it. Not focusing. Focus. There you go. Uh, you need to apply it a lot heavier. Because what we're, what we're doing here is starting to 
create the first shadows and um, single out where the highlight is. So you need to so apply more. Go over a larger area to you. Oh. Look like this. Take it in your brush and just take it from the top all the way down the bottom like this. I already did that one, so I think I need to feather it in. Mm -hmm. This process is just about building up layers, because with metallics, and the reason we're using inks is because with metallics you want to maintain the luster of the metallics. If you use just normal paints, they will tend to um, just cover over the metallics completely, whereas inks are slightly transparent, so you can maintain the kind of natural luster and finish of metallics using inks instead of paints. And that's all we're really doing right now is basically uh, kind of directing where the highlights will be by pushing the inks into where the shadow areas should be. Blue ink is just for color. It's just to add to make this more of a dingy brown as opposed to just sepia. If you want a more cold looking metallic, you can use just blue or more blue ink mixed into the sepia. I'm starting to lose my uh, ink here. I'll just mix more. I'm just saying. So I have this like hard line right there that I don't like. It's okay. We'll be okay. fixing stuff like that later. Oh, okay. So that's the answer I wanted to hear. Do we need more of this? Do we need to keep doing this part or? Uh can you show it more straight on? Am I focused? I think yours st you still need a lot more shadow. What? If you look at mine, you see the, uh, do you think yours looks like this in person? Possibly. I don't know. Yours is pretty damn shiny, so I can't actually really see what's going on. Oh, mine looks really dingy in the corners, like I look like I got moss going on it. I'm using my hand because the camera tends to like to focus on the, on the majority. So if I just bring the model up, it won't always focus, but if I bring my hand up, it will. We're gonna do the part. We're gonna do the You're gonna do what? I'm gonna make our displays even so I can see what the hell I'm showing you. Okay. How about you set up your wet palette and I'll just demonstrate something else to them while, I'm doing, while you're doing it? Okay. Okay. Um, so, when painting things like this, this armor that has filigree all over it, it has this fancy design on it, you can do the same process and just base coat it initially. And then, rather than doing what I'm doing down here, where I'm just going over the entire surface, because I have a lot of detail that I need to pick out, we'll be doing more, more intentional 
placement of shadows and highlights and stuff. But again, thinking about the actual shape of the object, the, uh, the highlights will generally be straight down the center. With something like this, whenever you have a hard line, the metallics tend to, uh, or the shine tends to focus on that hard line or close to the hard line. That can vary, of course. You can end up with a highlight that's kind of on both sides, depending on your viewing angle of the object. Uh, but this is a way that people will often paint it, is do the shine right up against the edge on one side, and then do the rest of the shine kind of off-centered on the other side, like that. That's a good way to go about it. And... Speaking to that effect, what I did here is perfectly viable as well. Instead of base coating the entire part and then working in the shadows, you can start uh, by just kind of sketching in where your highlight should be with your base coats rather than just base coating the whole part. Um, that's what I'm going to be doing on this side when I do the, the textured metallics, like on the back here. This is done by more specifically placing my highlights where I want them rather than coating the whole part. But generally when I'm doing smoother metallics like this, I, I like to focus on just applying it to the whole part and then applying the shadows and then bringing the highlights back up afterwards. Are you set up? Almost. Okay. Right. Everyone always freaks out when you use metal colors on a on a web palette though. I don't know why. Is that is that another myth busted? I don't, I don't see any problem with it personally, so... Maybe add a little tiny bit of black to that to make it darker. Yeah, I was like, I didn't quite get the same color. Or, you know. All right. Okay. What size brush are you using, Red? This is a number three Windsor Eight and Series Seven miniature. It's smaller than the brush you're using, but doesn't matter. I'm using a number two. You're using a number two normal series. Yeah. The Series 7 miniature are spotter brushes, so the bristles are shorter. Uh, so it just doesn't hold as much? Uh, yeah, technically, but the uh, because they're shorter, the bristles are a little more stiff, and it's better, I think, for feathering than large brushes, personally. If you apply the paint sideways, with your brush, you can you'll actually be feathering it as you apply it as well. And when you're feathering, you want to be um, your your brush needs to be pointed at the deep part of the paint rather than with it. Yeah. We're just fiddling around with this right now, babe. 
next one. When are we up to the pixel technique? After we finish this half. I see like a big ugly brush stroke that I hate, but... Alright. It's okay. Uh, yeah, it looks a bit better. Are we there yet? Uh, it's a lot darker in person. Okay, that's close enough. We're, we're gonna keep darkening it anyway, so... Alright. Okay, so... Now take black and blue. And mix them together. And again, add a little drop of glaze medium. The reason we're adding glaze medium again is mostly just for the retarding capabilities. It makes it so that we can feather it easier without it drying and creating coffee stains or tide marks. Can't really tell. It still looks pretty black. That's fine. Once you apply it over the blue, over the silver rather, the blue will show through a little bit. Okay. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing on one side and try to apply it similarly to how I'm applying it. So watch first and then, then do. So I take it mostly just in the tip of the brush, which is important, and then start at the top and just drag it all the way down. And the reason I do it with my brush sideways like this rather than making a stroke straight down is because when you apply paint like this, uh, the back half of the brush acts as a automatic feathering. So as I apply it, the back of the brush will take some of the paint up and it'll automatically be feathering it slightly. And then we go in afterwards and just feather it a little bit further to make sure we don't get hard lines. Uh, Kaminomani, yes. The straight retarder medium will work too. I just prefer glaze medium because it actually seems to do a better job retarding the paint than, than retarder medium tends to, in my experience. Go ahead and apply another layer to both sides. I was like, are you waiting? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm already not doing what you told me to do. Rip. Awesome, awesome. Oh, I keep wanting to go straight down, even though I know you're supposed to paint. Even with the side of the brush. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I'll blame it on my boomer nap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Goomzy, it's the same process, even if it's a single skirt piece. You just have to think about the object in, in, in terms of the shape. Um, so, like, uh, what's another thing I have? Like this, this guy? If you think about these skirt pieces, for example, these are more spheres, so the highlight would be more in the center. Uh, whereas you have things like the arm, which is literally just a cylinder, or if you have like, uh, uh, I don't know, Roman armor, you know, with the slats like this, even if it's just one slat, it's still a cylinder, even if it's just one, one slat. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, so next, take more blue ink and more black ink out of your bottle. New. Put it in a separate pile, no glaze, medium, no thinning. Talc, can this process work with a zenithal highlight? Uh, no, because with metallics, white doesn't enhance them. It doesn't really benefit the, uh, the brightness of the silver at all. That's, like I said in the beginning, black is best under silver. Because, uh... For whatever reason, it just makes it shiny. So I'll mix them okay. two together. Mix these two together? Yeah. One to one? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I would have put them closer together if I knew that's what was coming. I'm sorry. There we go. Yeah. Okay. That was the be brave part. You can watch first. Okay. I'm going to apply it on the entire thing. And then quickly rinse brush, clean brush, and then I'm going to wipe the ink off of the highlight part, clean my brush quickly, go back to the napkin, and just keep doing that on each panel. We're essentially trying to push the, the black and blue ink into the shadow areas and get it off the highlight areas. Okay. Put it you put a thick coat? Yeah, just take take the ink and put it on the entire surface and very quickly go into your water, wipe off some of the water on the napkin, and then start cleaning it off of the highlight center along the center line. You go in a particular direction? A particular direction? Uh, when doing this, I just stroke in the, in the direction of the panel. So going in the, the length so of the panel, like this. Push it in the... Uh... Yes. Um, Kumzi. Right now we're just adding a shadow and sepia blue as the moderate shadow and blue black is the extreme shadow question mark. Um yes. We're just the reason I'm doing multiple layers is just to build up color. So, like I said a little earlier, when doing metallics it's important to build up layers. The reason being is that we're trying to maintain the luster of the metallics and doing many layers will kind of give you a, a, uh, the layers build up together and kind of uh, create create deeper shadows and stuff and having more layers underneath makes things look more interesting once we're done. Yeah. 
and yes, the black blue is the extreme shadow. And applying it all over like this is also helping because um, it will pick out the, the, if you can see up close, these panels all have a little trim around the panel and doing this overall wash will also pick out that line where the panel meets the trim. So it helps do that as well. Paper towel might be able to saturate things. No, it's fine. Mine's saturated too. The white paper towel is preferable anyways. Is it now? Yeah. Damn, I wish I knew this when I did my shoe work. Mm -hmm. That's why we're doing this. Because you messed up the metallics on your shoe work, Jabby. <laughs> Yeah, Coomzy, that's right. What's Coomzy right about? Uh, he posted the... Uh, he's following along and doing it on the space main lane. Aww. Okay. That part looks dry. So when are you in danger of like overworking? Um, you can notice it as you're working on it. The longer you work on it, the more the paint's gonna dry as you're working on it. It's uh, it's hard. It's pointless to say like a time because it's gonna be different based on your climate, whether or not you have an air conditioning on in your room, all these different things. But uh, if the paint stops feathering and starts creating kind of streaks, then you're overworking it. Like, what if you're not done, though? Then fix it later. Because we can go in later with, because uh, we're, we're going to highlight this. You can technically leave it at this, because it, I mean, it already looks pretty decent. Um, yeah, looks good. Because it already looks pretty decent at this point. Um, but we can, I'm going to go in afterwards, highlight more, and then smooth things out even more with more inks and glazes and things like that. So it's it's not a one-step process. You can always fix things later on. Okay, so now take your silver paint, separate it from your main pile, or add a pile. Well, where to put it? There it is. Okay. So take a glob of it on your brush and separate it. Then add some glaze medium to it, just a little drop. Okay. So clean your brush. Okay, and then um, this time we're going to be going in the direction of the actual individual panels, so rather than up and down, left and right. And I'm going to take the paint onto the bristles and basically just make thin strokes going in the direction of the panel, like I said. Only focusing on the center, the very center of where the light should be hitting on all these panels. And I'm kind of making lines, not, not one large stroke, but using just the tip of the brush, I'm just making lines back and forth. Right. Alright. Okay. 
Let me say it, boss. I'm gonna do that two layers. And when you load your bristles with the paint, um, I always make a stroke on my hand, or you can do it on a napkin or something. You just want an ever so slight amount of paint in the very tip of the brush when doing this sort of thing. Yeah, Kumzi, if you did way too much, you can go back and and just uh, push it back again. Should my lines be distinct? Um, not really. If okay. they, if they, yeah, okay. Because <laughs> they're not. Yeah. If your lines are distinct, then you didn't add enough glaze medium. The glaze medium ratio will basically mixing about roughly one to one silver paint to glaze medium for this step. You doing this little clip, doodad? Oh, you can leave it for now. I'll show you how to pick it out later. Okay. Did you apply to? I did. Okay. So... Yeah. Yeah, turn it up a little bit. Yeah. It's looking very good. Okay. So, um... Do you have any like hard lines or anything like between the transition from the ink to the silver? Uh, not terribly hard. Like if you look at the luster though, you can tell. You can, can tell that there's it. a transition? Uh, I mean you can tell that it's brighter in the middle. Well that's the point. That's the, that's the whole point of TV <laughs> well, yeah, to, yeah. to pull that mm -hmm. out. So. Okay, so now we'll take um, the blue and, and black mixture. Just take a dot of it in separate pile again. This is the one without the glaze medium, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. And pick a full glob of glaze medium on your bristles. Big glob. Big glob. Big glob. I'll mix it's it big up. Enough. Yeah. Now we're creating a glaze. I'm also going to put a load, a brush load of water into it too. When you say a brush load? When I say brush load, I mean dip your brush in like this. Stopping wet, like dripping off the tip? Yeah. Oh, okay. I feel like that would be too much. Uh, not for a glaze. Should I go more? Uh, so test it on your hand. Take a little bit and then spread it on your back of your palm or something. And it should be just like bare, barely tinting it. Okay, we're gonna need some more water. Yeah. The fuck? I think you're, you're taking too much on the on the brush. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Good. That's glaze consistency. Uh, yeah, I mean you can... Glazes aren't just one consistency, so you can make it even thinner than that if you're having trouble getting it smooth. 
Chroma is my. <laughs> sorry, what? sorry, Crimson. You'll have to test on a piece of paper or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Crimson. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now just take your clean brush, rinse it, dab it on the paper. Well, you uh, better rinse water in there. Uh, yeah, whatever. And then take just the tip and dip it into the to the medium into the paint. Okay. And then make one stroke on your hand. For good luck. Yep, and then we're going to take it from essentially the edge of the metallic and drag it into the shadow. Yeah. What? Off camera. I'm off camera. Oh, okay. Oh. Thank you. Now okay. we're doing what? We're taking a small drop of the tip and we're going to start above where your, your transition is, above into the silver, above the shadow. And we're gonna drag it from there down into the shadow in a couple strokes. So above the silver and into the shadow. Yeah. And do that on each panel on both sides. And it looks like there's no perceptible change. Yeah, glazes are very subtle. Some master class level shit going on. And I can just glaze right on over that little clip you down. Yeah, it doesn't matter at this stage. This is what we do for hours. Uh, no, because we've already built up our other colors, so with uh, more opaque layers, so it's not necessary to do it over and over and over again for a long time. People who do it for hours and hours are either going for like extreme smoothness or um, are spending too much time glazing and not enough time layering. Kumzi, question for later. I got too much with black, with blue black shadow. Any way to fix it? What do you mean, Kumzi? Oh, you have too much of a hard line. So do what we're doing with the silver, uh, or rather, do what we're doing right now with the glaze with the blue black, but instead do it with silver. Add a bunch of glaze medium and water to the silver and start in the shadow area and drag up to the highlight. Basically if you have too hard of a transition in your shadow you need to either drag it, drag the highlight up from the shadow or you need to drag, drag the shadow down to the shadow from the highlight. Yes, really thinned out silver with medium.
just just a little note on like how to choose how much you highlight and how much you shade and everything. Uh, it really depends on how kind of atmospheric and dark you want it to be. Um, I've done a very small highlight just down the center and so there's a lot more blue and black in terms of the ratio from shadow to highlight on mine and as a result it'll tend to look a bit more um, a bit more dark and a bit more focused or uh, kinda like uh, a light is gleaming down on it in a very specific way kinda like old renaissance era paintings and stuff like that is kinda the style of things that they would go for typically like Caravaggio um, if you want it more broad you can do larger highlights and smaller shadows. Um, typically when you do that you're going to want a better transition from the highlight to the shadow though. So you'll maybe want to mix your silver with your shadow color and then do a, your, a base coat with that instead of just straight silver. That way you can build up to your highlight and have a middle tone uh, as your majority so that you have a more standard ratio between your shadows, your highlights, and midtones. Whereas here, I, I mostly just have a highlight and then a shadow. There's not a lot of midtone. But personally, when I'm doing true metallic metals, I prefer to let the inks kind of create the transition and sort of a midtone. Um, because, like I said earlier, they are transparent. So building up layers like this will give you kind of a a lustrous look to the metals uh, so that the shadows don't completely lose the metallic look. Okay. I went and glazed them up like four times when you're talking. That's fine. Show it. Mm -mm. Yep. So that's pretty much it, really. Um, what we can do now is take. Do you have a, a small brush, like a 2-0 or something? Uh, I've got a 0, and mm -hmm. I have a 2 zero. Right here. Okay, 2 zero. So take your unthinned silver, and now all I want to do is pick out some of these highlights uh, on the, the trim. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm just going to take unthinned silver, and just yeah. pick out using the side of the tip of my brush, just pick out the upper edges of these panels. That way they stand out a bit better. Do you do it across like the whole thing or focus it towards the middle where the highlight's at? Generally focus it where the highlight is on the rest of the panel. Yeah. We can also go in and Hopefully you can see in the video, there's little rivets. We can mm -hmm. pick, pick those out with a slight dot at the very top of the rivet. Because even mm -hmm. if even though they're in the shadow, um, they would, because they stand off the surface, they would pick out light more so than the rest of the parts. And that's also what we'll do with the little clip, is just use your unthinned paint with a really tiny brush pick out the rivet and then maybe highlight along the edge of the, the clip so that it stands out a bit better. It's quite an ask. Takes a steady hand. Practice. I definitely don't have a steady hand right now. <laughs> Someone about having a blood sugar crash earlier. If I like the rivets being like so bright. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't, you can just uh, 
apply some of your blue black over it and dull it down again. So something else I'm going to show, uh, since this was for more smooth TMM, uh, you can stop there, and it's pretty much done, as far as I'm concerned anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can, in my opinion, true metallic metal is most interesting when you use texture, so in just a moment I'll show you texture on the other panel, but you can also add texture to your smooth, in, uh, smooth TMM by using, again, just a small brush and on thin silver and then when you're highlighting these edges and stuff instead of making lines you can make little dots and nicks and stuff like that mm -hmm. and in your centers you can use dots and lines and kind of let the dots and lines bleed over into where your shadow areas are slightly as you apply them just kind of stippling slash Stroking ever so slightly to create little, little uh, slashes and cuts and dings and stuff like that. There's a couple of those sculpted into this model, right? Yeah, there are, and you can pull, pick those out by just using silver paint along like the bottom edge of the the cut or nick if you want to make it stand out. Now this is a thing you can definitely overdo, right? Yeah, totally. When when you're doing stuff like this, you want to use a very sharp brush. That's why I'm using a 2-0. Um, and you just want to use the very tip tip of the brush. You don't want to use the whole brush. Kumzi, when highlighting, would you ever mix the silver with white or use white dots? No, because silver is brighter than white. Um, when 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 the light hits the silver, it's as bright as it can possibly be. White will actually dull it down. It won't make it brighter. And if you use white in your highlights, mm -hmm. it's going to create a flat spot. So as you move the model in person, there's going to be just a little flat spot that doesn't reflect light in the middle of your highlight, which is not something you want. It's going to look goofy. Yeah. But uh, hopefully you can see when you do the little nicks and dots and stuff, it kind of just adds an extra little hint of detail. Because true metallic metal is best in person when you can move the model around and stuff, or in videos, um, because you'll be able to see like the little nicks and slashes and stuff reflect light differently as you turn the model around and whatnot. So it's a nice touch to add for stuff like that. I don't know how you get your lines so sharp. Mine always look like a blob. It's difficult, just very carefully. You just like the very tip of the hair. Um, I think I need to use, even with this stuff, even though it's like great, uh -huh. it's like I need to use drawing retarder or something. Is it got a little... Yeah, you little, can. A little, little blip. <laughs> you can. Uh, how about white aluminum from Vallejo Metal Color? I think chrome is, is brighter, but if if you have a brighter silver, that's you can use that. Yeah. And this process is the exact same for any color you're doing. So if you're doing gold or chrome, it's the exact same process. You can even use the same colors. Um, if you're doing chrome or gold, though, I would focus more on sepia or purple. Uh, 
mixes rather than black and blue and black and blue and sepia. Uh, and for highlighting gold and copper, you would rather use, um, rather than just straight copper, you would add a little bit of silver to your color for your final highlights rather than just the base color itself. But otherwise, it's the exact same process. So this is the Bob Ross two hairs and some hair. <laughs> okay, I can do this all day. So. Yeah. Let's go. What's next? That's pretty much it for that side. So now I'll show you how to do a more textured beaten metal on the other side. Um, beat some metal. And we'll just beat that metal. Uh, do you have a puddle of thin silver paint still? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to take that, and you just want some on the tip of your brush, like so. Mm hmm. And rather than base coating the entire part, I'm instead going to just stipple along where I want the highlight. So I want the highlight straight up this, this center line where you see this light. I'm going mm -hmm. to just roughly stipple, make dots all up and down this panel. Is it better to use a different kind of brush for this? I prefer using Windsor Newton Series 7 Miniature large brushes like this, the number three, because um, with 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 larger uh, bristled brushes, like, you know, I, I have a larger one here, I can just use that for demonstration. Uh, the bristles tend to fray more easily when you stipple, when using a really long bristled brush. Yeah, so do you not want it to do that? It's, it's best if you have... Thoughts. Yeah. Um, okay. But it's okay to use either. It, it doesn't matter that much. It's just going to change the look of it a little bit. But I'll use a longer brush just since that's what you're using. So you just go up. Yeah, try I'm to... kind of smooshing into it. Do you not want to do that? No, don't, don't smoosh into oh. it. I don't know. Well, stop and let it dry real quick. And then apply... Uh, unthinned black ink over it and restart. Anyone have any questions while we wait? Can you zoom in on what you're doing for me? Yeah, sure. It's focused. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. You just want to use the very tip of the brush and little tiny dots and slashes yeah. and stuff. Damn, that is ugly. There we go. On thin. Black ink. Now, you know this is going to take forever to dry, right? Uh. Well. So we got them to. Can you use shitty brushes to create multiple dots instead of one with a good point? Or sponges foam? You can use, um. You can use packing foam, the black stuff. It's really, uh, gritty. You can use that. You can use, um. Let's see if I have a brush. You can use short haired brushes like this. You can use something like this. But anytime you use something like this or a sponge, you need to wipe most of the paint off on a dry paper towel before you do it. And when you do this, it's going to create a much finer texture. Um, so it's not going to be the same like beaten worn metal as this. It's going to be a much finer texture and will end up being more akin to the smooth side that I showed. 
Uh, oh. So, well, I understand what's going to happen now. Well, what's going? Well, oh, you're doing like the hammered copper kind of thing, right? Yeah, kind of. So that's it's why it needs to be spread out instead of smooshed together. Yeah, because essentially we want some of the the black base coat to show through. So if you see here on the back, I already did this earlier, this demonstration, and you can see like it's just crustier and rougher looking than this side, which is more the smooth kind, because um, because when you build up dots and little slashes and dots and stuff. Um, you just end up with uh, crisscrossing layers of paint uh, and when combined with layers of ink you get um, layers of ink between layers of silver and it, it creates more of that texture that you want. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Is it dry yet? No. No? Cats are like that. <laughs> so, back to the filigree oh. part, huh? Yeah, I was like, I could paint a different part of the model. I can do this on the back of it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We can do it back there. You don't need your part. Well, okay. I want it to be on the same part for learning purposes. Okay. So yeah, just the tip of the brush, just little dots. And one thing that's important when doing this is anytime you do stippling, even if it's not metallic paint, um, there's a, a principle to it that's important, which is uh, in order to create a gradient with dots, you have to spread the dots out as you get further away from your central highlight. So, if I have something I can demonstrate on, let's use this block of wood. Uh, when you do your dots, this is going to be your center line, right? Whereas this is your shadows over here. When you do your dots, you want your dots to center in the center where your highlight is meant to be strongest so uh -huh. in that area your dots should be closer together uh -huh. whereas as you get further away your dots should spread out more and more and more until they're they're just like not even there okay so that's an important thing when doing stuff like this is to spread your dots out as you get away from the center line do I want tiny dots or big dots? Because whenever, I don't know, I do this, the brush, the brush like wants to flatten out and I get a line instead of a dot. It's not super important. If you want finer texture or, or broader texture, it's up to you. Um, I'm just kind of mushing things together a little bit, but I generally go for as small dots as I can get while still being quick. So. It's not a super big deal if you have larger dots. Okay. Well, mine, I get, I'm getting like a line. Uh, that's okay too. Okay. You can use lines or dots. Uh, it's just going to be a different look based on what you do. And I, again, it's all just down to preference at that point. So how far out do you go with it? Um, I'm focusing in the center, like I said, but uh, a couple dots out all the way to nearly to the edges of the panels. Like you said, you spread them out some more? Yeah, so if you look on the camera, you should be able to see okay. the dots get very sparse towards the edges.
do you paint over that clip like it's not there? Uh, I paint around it. Okay. Any questions while we wait? If you want, if you want it to be copper, Kunzi, just buy copper paint. You can mix orange ink into silver to get kind of a copper, but it's best to just buy copper metallics. And then use copper instead of the silver that we're doing here, use copper as your starting point. And then later on when we highlight it, you would add silver to your copper and use that as your highlight instead of just straight copper. So it adds one extra step when you're using a color other than silver. Is this what we're going for? A little extreme on the dots on the edges, but it's okay. I would like too many on the edges. Yeah. Well, I was trying to go more here, because uh, there's like the ridge. Yeah, that's a good point. That's fine. Uh, so what you'll want to do then is focus your shadows in this center here between the highlights right yeah okay so then we're going to go to our unthinned blue and black and I'm gonna go straight into the process we did on the front where I just mm -hmm. slather the entire surface okay and then clean it off the highlight areas but you don't want to clean it off completely, you just want to kind of make a stroke along the center and then move on to the next panel because you don't want it super exposed and clean. Because this process is all about building up layers like like the previous one, but just a different, different sort of style. Seems like it's probably a little more. Hmm. I know, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's a little more work. Yeah, I don't like making dots. So. Huh. Well, yeah, if you don't like making dots, this isn't going to be your method. That should be good. Oh, are you watching me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Alright, dude. Welcome so. to print. Armor, let's go. More silver. On thin or thin? You should be using thin. Just a little drop of paint of water with it. It keeps, it keeps drying out on me. 
Good power might need more water. Okay, and I'm gonna just repeat the process again. Try to this time try to focus on just the center uh, and your edge, and not go too far into the the shadow areas. And just small dots. Small dots. Many people are following along. Uh, uh what are we? a bunch. Really? Ten, fifteen. Cool. Well, no, I mean, how many are doing it, like Kimsey? Oh, I don't know. Just Kimsey, I think. I don't know if anyone else is. Do a few dots here and there in the shadow areas, very small ones. Small boys coming up. I thought it was a big boy, sorry, sniping me. <laughs> That's probably good. That was another big. <laughs> You're good. Stop. Stop, stop, stop! I gotta do one more. Oh my god. Okay. So now, do you have yellow ink? I do you have yellow Yar. Okay. That's lemon yellow. Oh, gross. Mm -hmm. uh, put it on the That's... palette and just mix it with some sepia to mm -hmm. make it dingy. And get sepia on the palette as well, of course. A separate palette. Oh no. There, is that better? Oh, you can't even see it. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Now wipe it on your napkin or something. Okay. And then I'm just gonna do a tiny little bit here and there, just in random kind of spots. On each panel. Random spell action. Yes. This. Just to kind of put it here and there. Should I thin it down some? Uh, I didn't thin mine down, but you may need to thin yours. Yeah. I don't know. Because I'm using Valeo game color ink, so. Okay, I'll just have a really, uh, some yellow metal. I'm just gonna go with it, let me see what happens. Okay. Every panel's gonna have it? Yes. And you said random. Yeah, pretty random. Just little dots and smudges here and there. Oh, well, I, I thought you were doing something else. I did well, patches. Well, that's right. Okay. Okay. Now get blue ink. Yeah. 
mean cyan. It's fine. This is not one of <laughs> Shinko. Should I tone it down? Oh god. Yeah, add a little drop of uh, a little tiny bit of black. Hang on a second. Same thing? Yep. Can I do it over the yellow? Doesn't matter. I'm just gonna apply it here and there. Don't want it like super crazy dark or visible, just little spots and bits and whatnot here and there. In the shadows and the highlights, doesn't matter. Okay. That's probably good. Okay. Now, uh, sepia. Just straight sepia. Yeah. With the sepia, we're going to drag it into the shadows. Um, starting from the upper highlight. And drag it down into the shadow. Okay, so unthin sepia. Unthin, yeah. From a highlight into a shadow. Yeah. Do you leave any part of the highlight, like, not touched? Uh, yeah, yeah, just a very, very center. It doesn't really matter at this stage, though, because we're still just building up layers. Okay, for the next step, I would use your zero brush. Okay. Now we're gonna start building actual dots. Oh, those weren't those weren't real dots. Those were nonsense dots. These are the real dots. So mix a little bit of glaze medium into your silver, into your unthin silver, just a little bit, a dot or so, yeah, a puddle, mm -hmm. small dot, small drop. Hmm. Wrong pile. That's okay. Okay. And then, uh, just gonna take it onto the brush. You don't mm -hmm. want it, like, super full. You want, you want, if you have too much on your, you need to make a stroke on your hand or your napkin or something to take most of the paint off. Okay. You just want enough on there that you can very carefully poke the surface and create dots. And we're going to do the same process, just kind of build up along the center line. Spread your dots out well enough that you can kind of let the 
the ink layers and the other layers of dots that we've done show through a little bit. And just build it up along the center. And then don't go too ham on the edges. Just a few little dots here and there. Really small, very finite as you taper off from the highlight. So at this point, we're just building up the more final dots that will be visible once we're finished. You make yours so round. They don't need to be round, they just need to be small. Bottom out of color. Try it up on your red. Can you show me what you have? Wait a sec. Okay. Should I work on blending it in a little bit more? That's what we'll be doing next. Uh, okay. So are we good right there? Yeah, that's probably good enough. Okay. So now take uh, sepia. Mm -hmm. And whisk most of it off on paper towel. Just want a little bit on the brush. And I'm going to, again, kind of just very small hints of it here and there. You still using the small brush? Uh, I'm using the my normal brush now. Okay. Small brushes just for the dots. And uh, kind of all over the place and then drag it from uh, not the center of your highlight but down below between your sh dark shadow and your highlight. Start there and drag the sepia down into the ink, into the shadows like we did before on the smooth metal.
You mean like into the crack? Well, into the off of the the highlight center, so down into the to the edges of the panels. Are you feathering it at all, or...? At this stage, no. Not really. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Is this, is this what we're going for? I didn't really apply more patches because I still had a bunch. Uh, I would do more stuff, yeah. Where? Well, look at mine. So it, it looks kind of like it's burnt or something or has dirt all over it. Yeah, because you have stuff yeah, everywhere. Yeah, you want little dots and, and smudges of of sepia all over everything, basically. Do I want any of it to be, like, uh, uh, darker? No, not super dark. Just make sure you lift your brush up. Apply it, then lift your brush up, and apply it somewhere else. I probably have too much on my brush right now. Yeah, you don't want too much on there. Like I said, you gotta whisk it off on the paper towel or something before you apply it. Oh, yeah, no. So when you're telling me to lift my brush up, mm -hmm. you also told me to drag it. When you're applying dots and stuff, you need to lift. When you're when uh, you're doing. Well, um, we're doing both, so, uh, like I said, um... Okay, do I need to do more? Here, just watch. No, you should be fine, though. Um, like I said, applying dots here and there, and little smudges and stuff. When you do that, you need to apply a dot and then lift. Apply a dot. I see you doing this a lot, and that's... Yeah, you're that's applying too thought, much. I thought you were pushing it into the crease. We were, and that's the other thing I said, is after you apply some dots around the highlights and stuff, such, you need to then also drag it down into the shadows. Okay. Okay. You confused me to combine two steps? Sure. Alright, I made some dots. Okay. Now we're gonna go in one last time with silver and a small brush. You thin down silver with glaze medium in it. Mm -hmm. And this time, again, whisk most of the paint off on your finger or the paper towel or something. And I'm going to apply it with streaks going in the direction of the panel, going down into the shadows ever so slightly, not too far. Is this like what we did when we highlighted the panels on the other side? Yes. Okay. Very similar, but make sure you get your highlights here, very small, thin lines. 
and don't let them overpower the dots too much. You want to make sure the the metallic is thinned sufficiently with glaze medium so that it's not uh, super opaque. Now I'm gonna make sure this is pretty good. Yeah, cat, cat's only. <laughs> he wants the paint. What do you want? Do you have food? I might, I might have to take care of this cat. We're almost done. So I should be good. good. So. Oh, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> oh, my lord. Uh, <laughs> Maybe you do have to take care of the cat. That scared me. <laughs> Is that cool, cat? <laughs> Dude, he has food. I promise you, he has food. <laughs> Kumzi said he's gonna pull a gun on him, dude. <laughs> Probably is, dude. Just gonna sneak up on me. <laughs> this looks terrible, dude. I'm not doing something right. Um, once we're done, take a picture and I'll uh, tell you how to improve it. I think it's mostly just the size your dots are too big. <laughs> Hurry. So. So you're just making little lines, right? Yeah. Are you like kind of glazing the metallic? Yeah. Yeah, we're essentially glazing the metallic highlights. Okay. Just to so kind of distinct lines, or no? You should be making lines. It is important to make lines in this case. So, how much room do I leave between the lines? No. It's not how much room you leave between the lines, it's just the process of building up lines it gives a different look than just making a single stroke across the whole surface. Hmm. And also, it helps blend things as well because when you do lines going in the direction of your blend, um, the thicker part of the line is going to be more opaque seeming than the tips of the lines. So the mm -hmm. tips of the lines are going to be smaller and finer, so they're going to be kind of, uh, they're kind of going to fade into the next color, essentially. So when you do lines in the direction of your blend, it's, it's just a little bit easier to do it that way than another way. If that makes should sense. I be, should I be worried about the top part of the thingy, the little lip on the armor. No, just focus on the centers of the panels at the moment. After this step is done, we'll do one ink glaze and then uh, do the same thing that we did on the other side and kind of pick out the edges and stuff like that and do lines and little nicks and chips and stuff. Kitty cat. Why? Check 
Jeff, when you're doing your lines, uh, try to focus on the center of the panel. So rather than doing like you're doing, if, if you look at my screen, what you're doing is kind of like this. Mm -hmm. uh, hold the bristles like 90 degrees to the surface and focus on stroking the brush along the center of the panel, like this. Because when you're doing this, you're letting your brush lay flat more on the surface, and you don't want that. You just want the very tip of the brush making very thin, fine lines along the surface. I feel like I'm not getting anywhere with that. What do you mean? Like, uh, I feel like nothing's happening. Well, it's it's not going to be like super visible because we're essentially glazing with silvers. Okay. Yeah, maybe that was my mistake. I also feel like I have a dry tip really bad. You can add a little more glaze medium if you need to. Look at that. It hasn't rained in days, okay. <laughs> it hasn't rained in months here, Jappy. You know what? Can I add water to this? You can. Oh, my water is like half metallic flakes on it. Uh, that's alright, Gumzi. The final highlight should be a little more spread out, though. When you're doing an, uh, an object that's really curved like that, that's an actual cylinder, you might need to drag the brush uh, along the surface more, rather than just focusing on the center like I'm doing. You might have to turn the model as you make the stroke, so that you get more surface area. Yeah, on the highlight. Because your highlight's a little too fine. Could be. Show me the model, JP. Oh. Hey. Ah. <sighs> yep. Yep. Are you focusing? Or oh, not focusing? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's good enough, so we'll do one more thing. Okay. Uh, get your blue and black. About to, uh, make some more of it. No, this is, I think this is blue and black. <laughs> and add more glaze medium to it. Add fresh glaze medium. Fresh? Yeah, you, that glaze medium's been sitting there drying the whole time. Come on, yeah. And a drop of water. Okay. Let's get yeah. a paper towel. Check it against your skin. It should be pretty thin like this. Okay, we're good. Now take it and load it. Load it on your brush. Loading it. I'm loading. This time, don't apply it on the whole surface, but apply it heavily around the side in your shadow, just overlapping onto the highlight. 
and then go in and feather it. Set in the shadows, right? Yes. Here, if you watch, I can show again. Oh, I already applied, so... Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm doing this now. Okay. Cat? You need the chill, baby. That's what I feel like being the cat soundtrack needs to go. <laughs> you wanna go to the streets? Cause this is how you go to the streets. Don't threaten your cat on camera, dude. This is gonna be recorded. Oh no. The cat's gonna turn this into the cops. Painting my cat now. He makes the finest brushes. <laughs> cat. I hope my feathering was done. Huh? I was like, I hope my feathering was done because I lost my opportunity, I think. Yep. So, is that it? Are we done? That's, that's it for that, and then the only thing left to do is the same thing we did on the front, and just uh, pick out the edges and add little nicks and chips if you want, stuff like that. Pick out the little clip rivets, things like that if you want to do that. Yeah, I'm not happy with some of this, so I'm gonna, I'm okay. gonna do a little bit. That's fine. Wait, the tip of the brush goes up to the shadow. That's right. I forgot that was in there. The cat just wanted help. Just wanted help. Yep. Okay, so um, we do a highlight of uh, doodads, things and stuff. And then let's pretty much it once you apply your little nicks and chips and stuff at the last step and highlight the uh, the edges and trim like so. And that's just a more you know beaten up, worn, kind of damaged looking metallic, more dirty and dingy and weathered because um, we used a lot more sepia. We used dots to build things up instead of just base coating. Uh, it takes a little bit more time, usually, to do it right, uh, but it's it's not much slower than doing the front one, the uh, more smooth metallic. And yeah, it gives you a nice, like, beaten, weathered look. And that's pretty much it. I definitely think this improved my true metal to like game. Good.
Dream it up. Um, um. Oh, cat. Oh. Ow. Jeez. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Cat has questions. Cat has opinions. No, Deborah, mayonnaise isn't a question. <laughs> Cut out of my lap, but that's okay. Nice. I don't think you're holding him hostage. For what? I don't know. Something. Can anybody. I would, just... I would give someone something. That's good. <laughs> That's whatever. I'm gonna get like a big old booty slash. Booty slasher. Booty slasher. Okay. Done. That's that. Yep. That's that. Cool. Thank you. I'm gonna take care of this cat. Thank you. Know. Thanks everybody for showing up. Yep. I'll be switching to the normal chat now. Oh, well, you got a question, Coomzy? A question? What can Quincy do to improve it? <laughs> um. More dots, smaller dots, spread them out more. Um, I would get a brighter silver, below metal chrome, ideally. Um. But otherwise, this is pretty good. Uh, maybe try to get more of your colors showing through a bit. Your yellows and blues and stuff. But yeah, your dots look fairly large is the only real standout thing 